chance, she took it. Wonderful touch and the finish to boot. So England taking a one goal lead against the defenders. Two minutes later, England made it 3-1. Russo with her second, turning in the cross from Lauren. Hi guys, thanks for joining. Um, I'll just wait for Alessio to come on. She'll probably take a minute. If you've got any questions that you'd like to ask her, then um, leave them in the in the screen, the kind of feed there, and um, we'll try and get to them at the end of the at the end of the chat. <clears throat> we'll just give her a minute because I'm sure she's going to take a second to come in. But thank you all for joining. How are we all doing? <clears throat> Hey guys That's a good question We'll try and get to that one at the end H3ASA2N <clears throat> Mo, how you doing bud? How's it going man? <clears throat> I need one of your shirts up here See if she's uh, trying to. Here she is. Hello. Hey, Les, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. I wasn't sure how to get on it. Yeah, I should have told you that I had to request you <clears throat> and it will um, let you join. Oh, how are you? How's it? I'm good. How are you? How's it all going? You're back in England right now, right? Yeah, I'm back in England. It's good. Um, just training with my family. Not really. It's a little bit um, surreal, right? Because you wouldn't usually be home right now, would you? No, I was supposed to come home on the 10th of May. Wow. So have you got yeah. um have you got a regimen from UNC that you're following? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of on doing a bit of both. I'm on a UNC program and an England program. Okay. Um, so yeah, they give me stuff to do every day. Nice. And they're keeping me ticking over till it's. It's done. hard though, isn't it? It must be challenging. Just it's just so something no one expected to really happen, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's. I was saying to my dad earlier. I was saying I haven't, I haven't trained on my own for this long. Like not even in the summer. <clears throat> it's been like seven weeks now. Yeah, so, really yeah. nuts. Well, well, I appreciate you coming on. Um, basically, what we'll do is we'll kind of talk a little bit about your story and how you sort of got from playing in the UK to then eventually going out to UNC and kind of how that experience was. Um, to anyone that doesn't know Alessia, she um, plays forward for UNC and, and for England as well. You've represented England all the way through the age groups. Um, I was going to reel off some of your like accolades, but I'll be here all day, so I'll just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the ACC freshman in 2017, the offensive player in the player of the year in 2018. There's so many more, but um, don't want you to embarrass you. So we'll just kind of we'll just kind of start chatting about your um, how you started. So just talk to me a little bit about how um, you know you started playing in England. Obviously, you're at Chelsea first. Um, obviously, I think you made an appearance for them as a, as an adult on the adult team, and then um, moved to Brighton. So just talk to me about how you started how it kind of came about that you went to Chelsea and how that kind of, how that experience was for you? Yeah, so I was at Chelsea from when I was eight until 17. It's a long time. Um, loved it. Um, <clears throat> was, went all through the academy. Um, so, yeah, it was a great setup. I loved my time there. Um, I was with the reserves for three years, I think. And then in and out with the first team a little bit, um, when I had a, my debut against London Bees, that was actually the only time I played for them. I played for them when I was 16 and then on and off training and stuff. And then when I was 17, the year before I went to America, I moved to Brighton for a year. To okay. They were in the league below. Um, okay. But I moved there to play <clears throat> experience like first team football properly before I went yeah. to America. So you already knew um, you were going to go to the US when you moved to Brighton? Yeah, so when I moved to Brighton, we sat down and it like it was I wasn't 18 yet, so you, it wasn't a pro contract, but 
right. they were discussing pro contracts and I had to tell them right away I was going to America and I couldn't sign anything. Um, yeah, so but, let's, uh, we'll touch on that in a little bit about how sort of, because I know you kind of basically turned down a professional contract to, to come out to the US and we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, <laughs> how, how was it kind of that year with Brighton where it was kind of your first year actually playing first team football um, with, you know, with girls that are a lot older than you are? How was that experience? Yeah, it was great. It was very much what I needed before I went to America. Um, right. More physical, I'm sure. Yeah, much more physical. You're playing against fully grown women. Um, yeah. And the league was, wasn't the top league. It was the second league. So it was a lot more physical and a right. lot more like, yeah, it was tough. It was a good, great experience before I came to America. So, so you, you didn't there. actually play in the, um, the Super League for an extended amount of time. Um, but I'm sure you know of the league. What do you think are the biggest differences between... It's the Women's Championship, right? The second division. Is yeah. Called that then? Yeah. So how was the... What do you think the biggest differences are between that and the Super League? Obviously, it's probably physicality. Um, are there any other ones that you think? Um, yeah, I mean, the players are... Obviously, both leagues are great. Um, yeah, for sure. For a young player, especially. But yeah. the WSL is... You have some very... Te you have, well... Now you have like players from all over the world. There's the top player, the top scorer in the league right now is Vivian Miedemar from Holland. So it, the the league is attracting not only the best players in England but the best players from Europe and yeah, which is America quite recent. I've I've seen that. You know, a lot of girls. Uh, you just saw Sam Kerr just move to Chelsea from yeah. the end of yourself. Who's you know she's a big time striker. You know, so it's um, obviously becoming more and more um, attractive to the best the best players out there. Which again we'll yeah. touch on later on about. Um, you know, your future goals and what you think about all that stuff. Let's kind of, yeah. um, I wanted to ask you as well, were you always a forward? I know that, um, you know, I think your brother plays semi-pro, your dad played at a good level as well. He was a forward. Um, does he take any credit for that, that you became a forward? Yeah. Too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. So did you always play that position when you started playing or were you, did you ever play anywhere else? Yeah, I always play um, either striker or right or left wing. When I was at Chelsea for a while, I played number 10 too, but okay. mostly the front, front four somewhere. Nice. Always, always attacking. Yeah. Don't like to cool. Play. So then you, so you played the year at Brighton. How did you do during that year? Did you think you performed well? Did you score any goals? How was it? Yeah, I scored a few goals. I can't, I'm not sure on the number, but yeah, we had a decent season actually. It was, Brighton's a great club. Um, Let me find it. How many you scored? Yeah, three and seven games. So it's, I think that's correct. So it's a pretty decent, decent ratio for for know what you've done. And you were so young as well. Yeah, no, it was it was great. I loved Brighton. Their setup is unreal. The facilities that they have are top class. You train and use the men's facilities, so they have access to all of that, which is great. Um, so yeah, no, it was great. Yeah, I what a great experience. Them. Yeah. And then, so fast forward a year. Um, America, which you already... Oh, well, let's talk about how that kind of came about. How did um, UNC come about? Was it always UNC you were going to go to? How did they kind of approach you? How did that all um, come to fruition? So I always kind of knew I wanted to go to America from a pretty young age, and I've always followed UNC and yeah. known who Anson was. Um, but when I was at Chelsea, my um, centre director was Mark Parsons. So... Okay he coached me for a little bit and we had a great relationship and when I decided that I definitely did want to go to America I reached out to him and he put me in touch with Anson and then I spoke to UVA and Florida State. Florida State um, is a big program. But, yeah UNC was the only one that I visited and I just fell in love with the campus but I also had a tournament in LA um, when I was 16. Okay. And we played the USA South Korea and Brazil, I think. Okay. And it was just full of college scouts. So okay. that was when they kind of saw me a bit too. Oh, so UNC came to that? Yeah, our assistant coach okay. was there. Yeah. I've got you. So let's kind of fast forward. Your, you came here when you were 18, right? Or 19? Mm -hmm. 18. So you were 18. Yeah. I, I came to America when I was 18 as well. How did you, um, first off, what were you kind of expecting to? Um, with with the soccer and with kind of life and was it difficult to adapt to the cultural change 
Um, I'm sure it helped. It did a lot to come out at the same time as you. Yeah, we came so that out must have been, That must have been massive for you. Yeah, it was um, huge to have a familiar face. For sure. And I, I did the same. I came out with a, with a friend as well when I first came to the US. And it, it's kind of, if you don't have that, it's really tough. Um, mm -hmm. So how was it? How was it settling in? Was it, was it um, a shock to the system a little bit to actually be away from family for the first time? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm a big home girl too. I love being at home. I love yeah. spending time with my family. So it was a hard decision, but it definitely did help having Lotta with me. Um, sure. But the first couple, well, the first couple of weeks were pretty crazy. I didn't even have time to think about home because you have right. to set everything up. You have, I didn't even realise, but like your bank account, your phone account, yeah, all the boring stuff. And then, you, and then you've got pretty season. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And then I've got a game next weekend. So yeah, yeah. no, it was busy. Um, but our team operations manager, Tom, I have a very good relationship with him and he helped it. He made it as smooth as it could be. Um, and obviously the girls were all great too. Awesome. So you kind of, um, you settled in pretty well with Lotta. I know, I know how highly Anson thinks of you. I'm not going to read out like what he's kind of said about you in, in uh on the website and stuff but he obviously thinks super highly of you how was it for kind of playing under him i know that anson's more of a he cares about you as, as girls and as people rather you know above soccer players if you like he'd rather you girls develop good character so that you can go into the world after after football and still <laughs> succeed so how was that because that's quite different i'm sure to many many coaches in the uk who are you know football 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 um and maybe not not so interpersonal with with you so how was that to to kind of to adapt to yeah no you could you don't really at first like when you first get there and we're in pre-season it is he is more about football but yeah it's kind of when you have like your team meetings and stuff you realize that that's not his biggest priority and he'll he's open about it he'll tell you straight up that his first goal is to develop your character but the way that he develops your character makes you tougher on the pitch anyway yeah, and it definitely. makes you like a better player and like more competitive so although that's his first priority it just helps with your academics and just your football work so plays so both brilliant. ways awesome yeah. so talk me through um well fast forward kind of through pre-season you start playing in the team do you notice any um any differences in, in standard um kind of expectation versus reality how did you expect the level to be when you came out obviously it's super high level here the girls in college especially at the in the ACC and the girls you're playing against are, you know a lot of them are international players you've got girls from all over the place that are a really high level were you expecting to dominate or were you kind of um not too sure on how, how it would go the first year yeah no I wasn't too sure to be honest um when I came in um as a freshman it is daunting you're the you're babies on the team and sure. <laughs> you're you're treated a little bit like that too at first yeah. um until you earn their respect on the pitch i guess definitely so um yeah no it was hard um but i i loved it and i loved playing with older players um Def my freshman year but it was a lot different the, as anyone will tell you i'm pretty sure <clears throat> the american game is faster they're stronger and they're fitter so physical and fit. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. yeah. So that was different. And that was actually great for me because I've always relied on my technical ability. So to come and play in that side of the game, I think has just helped my game. Um, but yeah, when it was funny, my first game was um, against Central Florida <clears throat> in mm -hmm. Florida. And one, it was boiling. So I had to adapt to that. Oh, that, I was going to say, yeah, dealing yeah. with that is huge as well. Yeah, yeah. the heat out here is different, different Ridiculous. level. Something you've <laughs> never seen. Especially in August. Oh, my God, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. So, and then we we actually tied the game. Go and on. then they scored. And then we we actually lost my first game um, against Central oh, Florida. No way. And in Golden Goal. And I'd never played Golden Goal before. So it was a right. weird one. But, yeah. Yeah, a little bit different. Yeah, I've I've, I've lost the game in Golden Goal for it. But, <laughs> oh, the game's done. Like you're not. Yeah. Yeah, strange. And you can tie at the end of that as well. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's the best feeling ever. But yeah. to lose is kind of a you know gutting. You know. Yeah. So you you start to settle in. You you play some games. How was the first year kind of as a whole? Do you think you kind of grew as a player? Do you think you grew? As, I'm sure you grew as a person. You must have matured quite a lot. Um, did your family visit you at all and come to games? Or how, how did that kind of uh, transpire? Yeah, so 
my Lotta and I moved out um, and flew over, and then within two weeks, both our families flew out okay. um, and came to a few games to for the start of the season, which was nice. Um, nice. My parents come out as much as they can. Um, my dad was actually at the ACC final and the NCAA final last year, wow. which was great. Um, and my whole family came out for our season openers. But yeah, Brilliant. no, it was it's hard to be away from your family, but when they come over, it's great. They love to see. Of course, and it also it makes you it makes you really appreciate, you know, appreciate what you've got. Um, yeah, been away from my family a long, long time, and yeah. you, I've become so much closer to my siblings and um, you know my mum as well. So it's um, there's a silver lining for sure. Yeah. Um, so how um, just kind of go through briefly how the the season kind of um, developed and how you girls did and kind of how you learned, what did you learn in your first year in America on the pitch mainly? Um, we didn't actually, well, we did well in the ACC. We, <clears throat> we won the ACC tournament, which was great. And yeah. then we went into the NCAA tournament. We got knocked out in the Sweet 16 against Princeton. <clears throat> and it was a game we 100% should have won. Um, really? We had a good side. And it, we lost in overtime. It was 1-1 in the game and we lost in overtime. Horrible way to lose. And, yeah, horrible. And that kind of set a tone for me because I like we underachieved and that was horrible. And then you you see the seniors like fall to the floor because oh, they know it was their last game and they know yeah. they've underachieved. So it was it was a um, tough way to go out my freshman year, but yeah. it just spurred me on for my sophomore year and junior and hopefully senior year this this year. Yeah, for sure. So, I was, you know, there's a little bit of silver lining for you there. <clears throat> Seeing that, you're like, I don't want to experience that. You know, I'm going to yeah. I'm gonna give it as much as I can to um, not go through that, uh, yeah. I'm sure. Even though, we'll, we'll touch on that later, how you've been through some heartbreakers as well uh, recently. Yeah. Um, someone's just asked there, so I'll ask you here. Is there, obviously there's an Italian descent in your family. Um, is that from your dad's side or? Yeah, so my dad's dad was from Sicily. And then... Okay. My grandma and my dad's sister live in Italy still. Um, okay. Someone said, do I speak fluent Italian? No, I don't. I, I doubt that. That was very difficult. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was, uh, was asking. So I was going to ask that. Obviously, Russo is very Italian. Alessia's Italian. Yeah. And his brother's name's Giorgio, right? So, very Italian. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the first year doesn't go well, but there's a silver lining. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure you grew as a player and um, kind of experienced a lot. Um, you were also the freshman of the year that year, so you must have had a great year, um, maybe statistically. I know a lot of those awards kind of, they're awarded for the numbers, aren't they, a lot of times in, in America, yeah, you know, what kind of goals you're putting up. So that's a great achievement for your first year. So then you come back for, for the second year. Um, what was your mindset kind of going into that second season? Obviously, I'm sure it was, you know, get further in the tournament. Um, what Did you set yourself personal goals or was it, what was the team's, the team's kind of goal that year? Yeah, I mean, that year was probably, <clears throat> out of the three years, I've had probably the most talented team we've had. Um, the second year? Yeah, my sophomore year. <clears throat> we had everyone fit and healthy, which was great. Um, yeah. And a few of us had just come off. So that summer before pre-season, we had an under-20s World Cup. And there was um, three or four players, I think, from our team that were at that World Cup. So we'd had like a heavy wow. summer. <clears throat> which was great because it was going into season and we were all fit and <clears throat> raring to go. So, yeah, no, the team was great. And one th our, that year was kind of the year that um, our team chemistry grew. My freshman year, we were still like a very close team. But yeah. compared to my sophomore year, it was completely different. And really? anyone that was in the team could kind of tell. We had like more leaders started to grow and we had just – we were just so much closer on, on and off the pitch that Which helped means. us when we were playing. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So you can briefly touch on how you've been to two World Cups, right? Youth World Cups. Yeah. So how was that? Um, how was that versus, was the first one before America? Yeah, the first one was on the 17s. So how, how were them, them experiences for you? I'm sure um, <clears throat> unbelievable, I can imagine. Yeah, it was great. The first one was in Jordan and wow. it's a country I wouldn't probably go to unless... It's kind of third football. world, right? I've, I've not been out there. Yeah, no, it was it was crazy, but it was great. I loved every minute. The <clears throat> tournament was really well put together. Um, 
we lost in the quarter final to Japan. Um, they were the better team. They deserved to. They went on to win it. Um, but yeah, no, they were great. Um, the tournament was great. We had a quality team, and most a lot of the girls from that 17s World Cup were in the 20s World Cup too. And you were um, in that one as well, so they kind of uh, filtered through. Yeah, right. So then the 20s World Cup was in France. And again, we got knocked out to Japan, this time in the semi-final. Really? Oh. Yeah. And then we played France in the third and fourth playoff and won on penalties. Did you um, take one? Yeah, I actually missed my penalty. No way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then I missed and then our goalkeeper saved the next one and then we okay. scored, so we won. So she bailed you out. So my goal, yeah, she saved me big time. <laughs> that would have been, did the keeper save it? Yeah, keeper saved it. Jeez, that sucks. Yeah. I've missed penalties as well. It's awful. Yeah. Feet. So when I took it in the College Cup last, um, in December. Yeah, yeah, the last penalty penalty steal. Was it was easy. That was a, you looked like so confident <laughs> and just stroked it in. I thought, again, we'll touch on that later. But um, yeah, penalties are no uh, mean feat. Very, very more a lottery than anything else. But you just yeah. got to step, step up and be confident. It's good yeah, that you've yeah. missed one in a big tournament and scored one in a big tournament because yeah. it takes, you know, after missing some players, you know, I won't want to take one again. Yeah, no, it wasn't fun. <laughs> but to step up and score is brilliant. Okay, so the second year, um, how was the, would you say you performed better the second year personally? And how did the team um, do that year? Yeah, personally, I, I kind of, uh, my freshman year, I played on the left wing pretty much the whole season. Okay. And my sophomore year, <clears throat> I got moved to the nine. Um, and definitely was playing better. Um, yeah. It really helped me coming off the World Cup, I think. Definitely. Um, Would you say you're more suited to playing in a number nine? I know that you're, you know, you're a big, strong girl. You're tall, you're strong. You can play with your back to goal. You can turn and run at players. Would you say that you're more suited playing in that number nine role? I'm, I mean, to me, you look like a, you know, a perfect nine, like a target striker. Um, what was the kind of thinking behind playing you out on the wing? Was it because you'd previously played there um, when you played in England or did you feel comfortable out there? How was it for you? Yeah, so all through England, I played on the right wing. Um, okay. I'm pretty sure uh, that's 90% of what every game I played for England, I was right wing. Okay. Um, but when I was at UNC... <clears throat> Anson played me on the left wing so I could cut in on my right foot. Right. Um, and it was successful in the start of my freshman year. So he stuck with it through the whole year. Yeah. Um, but I kind of was a bit predictable coming in pretty much every time. I didn't like to go down on my left. Yeah. But now I would, I would go on my left. But freshman year, I would pretty much get the ball drive inside and then like try and create or, or get a shot off. Right. Um, so, yeah, my sophomore year, he moved me into the nine. And we were playing, a, to begin with, a 4-3-3. Um, three, three. Um, and I loved, I liked the 4-3-3 three, three the best. Um, yeah. This year we played a 3-5-2, which was actually great and well suited to what we had in the team. Um, but yeah, no, I, I probably, hopefully in the future, I'd see myself in the nine um, or on the right wing. I don't see myself as a left winger, but... I'm happy to play there. I like. So you're out. you're quite comfortable in any of the position. Yeah, yeah. I, as long as I'm somewhere up the top. Yeah. So <laughs> so in the sophomore year, you played more in the nine. You were saying. Yeah. So he moved me to the nine my sophomore year, um, and I was at first struggled a little bit finding my feet, and then one game it just clicked, and that's when I started to progress through my sophomore year a little bit. So then let's kind of go up to the injury um mm -hmm. which happened that year right the set your second year yeah it was in the last regular season game so you're you're flying basically as a sophomore mm -hmm. you know you're the mvp of the team you're, you're banging goals in um you know you're on top of the world really and then bang you mm -hmm. kind of talk us through it you kind of broke you broke your leg right yeah i fractured my tibia so yeah. you've how i mean taught me through how that was because you you must have been thinking you're about to go to the national tournament and dominate. Um, how was that mentally? Had Have you ever had an injury before in your career? And um, kind of just talk to me a little bit about how that was. I'm sure it was so challenging for you. Yeah, no. Um, before that, I'd never been out for longer than maybe two or three days. 
um, never had an injury, never had a major injury. <clears throat> so, yeah, it was a 50-50 with the goalkeeper. And it wasn't even a foul. I just, I've struggled with shin splints throughout my, like, youth. Um, I always had shin tightness, um, okay. but nothing that would put me out of a game. Yeah. Um, and it was just a 50-50 a and her knee came into the bottom of my shin. And I just, I knew right away it was not Bad. good. Um, yeah. yeah. Anson actually tried to, I came off and I was in pain and I was, I'd got over it a little bit because I was sat down. Yeah. And I asked our trainer to see if I could go back on. And I literally like brushed my foot on the floor and was like, no way. Yeah, no pressure. Um, but it was actually really lucky. So my family flew in the two days before that game to watch. Okay. They were there for. Oh, so they were there. That to was see senior it. night. Yeah, so they they wow. saw it, which was not nice, but made it like they were there through my surgery. Yeah, a blessing through, in disguise that they were there for you to support you during yeah, that time. Yeah, it really was. Because I'm sure that it would have been worse. It would have been worse for them to be at home, get the call, and then have to come out. You know, with that. Yeah. You know, I can imagine being on a plane, um, kind of worried about you. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No. So. But yeah, I wasn't sure at first if I was going to need surgery or not. Um, I got the, It happened on th Thursday or Friday night, I can't remember. Um, had the x-ray um, and then I had the surgery the following Monday. So Quick. I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to have surgery at first, but then the um, doctor recommended it just with my history of shin splints. He said that like could potentially happen again and I was like, no way. Jeez. So... I had the surgery on the Monday. <clears throat> and so just talk to me a little bit about um, kind of how how did that affect you? I know the girls went on to lose in the final that year, right? Yeah. Um, I'm sure that sucked as well, uh, that you yeah. couldn't be a part of it and that you felt that you could have, you know, helped the team in, the, in those huge games. But how was it on a personal level, um, did you have doubts about coming back as the same the same player? Um, how was it in the recovery process, and how did you kind of deal with that? And you know, you're still so young, and that's the first time you've had a had a big injury like that. How was it for you? Yeah, no, it was definitely one of the hardest things I've had to do. Um, yeah. <clears throat> it was. I uh, I mean, the the surgery itself and the recovery process wasn't too bad. Um, I knew I was going to be out for the rest of the season which was horrible because it, it happened just before post-season when it gets exciting. Right, the the, the but, type of games you want to play in. Uh, exactly, yeah. Right before then, yeah, it must have been awful. Um, but when you get injured, you kind of think, oh, like, gutted, wish I could be out with the team. And you almost, like, want the games to be over so you're not missing out on it. But right. I had a little bit of that at the start. But then as you uh, – and this is credit to the – the program of UNC and the girls on the team but I kind of like couldn't wait for the next game because I knew like I was going to see the girl that stepped in for me in the nine was a senior um her name was Alex Kimball yeah. one of the seniors I had a really good relationship with and she would like come to me for advice at half time and like so like the and I'd sit down with Damon our assistant before games and he'd be would watch clips on the team um that we were playing against and he'd be like, "What? What would you do if you were playing in the nine? Like, so that's amazing, get... really. You know, that yeah. you talk about silver linings. You'd never have had that. Um, <clears throat> you'd never had that experience of being able to watch the girls, being able to, you know, mentor them if you like. So that yeah. must have been new for you, and you know, obviously not ideal. But you talk about, you know, coming back on the pitch as a player after that, you have much better kind of perspective of how you can help others. So. Like I said, it's probably one of the worst things that could possibly happen to to a to a soccer player. But you know, there's there's always positives um, that can come from it. So that's really good how you've um, how you're able to help Alex and yeah, something you wouldn't have got to do. <clears throat> yeah, no, definitely. And I got to work on a lot of stuff that wasn't great. So like just with like my strength, I focused on that a lot when yeah. I was coming back and core stability, like plyo stuff that you don't really think about when you're playing and training. Yeah, so, so you so you've gone through that your sophomore year, um, then we're in your junior, year, which was last season, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so you come, were you ready for to come back in the <coughs> um, the season uh, when you got back in the fall? How how was the recovery? How long did it take you? And um, when were you fully fit again? 
Um, I played 20 minutes in a spring game, our last spring game against Washington Spirit in April. And okay. then I actually went to an England camp at the end of April um, in Spain and played the last 30 minutes of the of the last game. Um, and then my first proper game was we played Leon um, in early August when they were over here. Oh, um, good, please. Yeah, but it, so I probably wasn't back to like playing till maybe May time properly, June. Yeah. Um, but I actually don't think I started playing well again until um, probably the start of postseason. Um, oh, really? I, I did all right in regular season, but I struggled a lot. It wasn't to get a lot like you don't realize you lose loads of little pieces that you don't even think yeah, about when sharpness. you rehab. Yeah. Did you, did you feel, was there any kind of obviously you're going to lose that from, from being out and recovering like that, but did you feel like you, um, did you feel any doubt going into challenges? Was there anything like that kind of fear that you it might happen again at first? Um, I think at first I was a little bit wary of it, but yeah. after that it wasn't too bad. I was happy to go in for anything, but I just had a bit of a frustrating start to my junior year. Just wasn't where I wanted to be. Um, yeah. Wasn't doing what I normally do, but. So how did you get I, through it? What did you do to? What did you do to get back to the level? Because come postseason, you started firing again in all the games that mattered, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I, it, I spoke a lot with my mum and dad about it. And I had a lot of meetings with Damon, our assistant coach, and just aired all my frustration. And we started to look at film a little bit more and just focus on like little details in training. Um, yeah. Where a lot of it was with, with my footwork, like, I wasn't moving my feet quick enough because like I it wasn't anything to do with, like passing or crossing or finishing it was like little things like turning like quickly and getting yeah. in and out of place quickly um things that before would yeah. come so naturally to you yeah awesome so so you, let's talk about um the postseason obviously ended up awful but yeah. you go, I thought you girls, I mean, I spoke to a lot after it and just sort of <clears> said, um, you know, well done. I thought you girls played brilliant, both you girls and, and as a team. It's, that last game was a complete toss-up, wasn't it? Two best teams. Yeah. And no one could really break the deadlock in the game. Yeah, no, it was funny because at the hotel the night before, obviously we're in Stanford's land. So yeah, there's a lot of, lot of Stanford fans at the hotel we were staying in. Mm. And one of the guys, some random guy asked asked us if we'd won against Washington State. We were like, yeah. So he said, oh, so you're playing Stanford next? And we were like, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, oh, good luck. Like, already everyone had counted us out. And <clears throat> that actually spurred us on even more. Um, yeah, sure. No one really expected us to to win or not at least not concede against the forwards that they have. Um, yeah, those um, – they've Sophia Smith was – different level against um I think UCLA she ripped them to shreds and UCLA, then yeah. she was she was brilliant um I know that the game it was really kind of a tit for tat you managed to shut them down you had a couple of half chances in the game but nothing really um it was it was a really close game that like you said could have gone either way probably going to penalties was probably fair even though it's unfair on the the loser that was probably a fair way yeah. the game went from what I was watching. But mm -hmm. how was it? Um, how was it first off kind of like going into the shootout? What were you girls' mentality and were you prepared? And um, then you can kind of a little bit touch on how how tough it was to take that loss. It must have been one of the biggest losses you've gone through. Yeah. So it was funny. So when we – I don't know if you saw any of the semi final, but <clears> – <throat> Yeah, I watched the game, yeah. So – our, we were slipping all over the place. Like yeah. our, the field was really thick and and wet as well, even though it wasn't raining. Yeah. Um. So the day we had one day in between the games, and ha Anson was like, "I'm not having this. Like, I'm not having our girls there. Like on ice skates, blah blah blah." Yeah. And so he <clears throat> ordered us all like studs from. Okay. So someone flew from UNC with like a suitcase full of studs. Jeez. So we were all playing in like in boots that we'd never worn before. 
Like and a new boot. Some, wow. Yeah, some were a bit tight, some were a bit big. We just had to deal with it. So that was one thing. It's funny to look back on now. Um, yeah, I didn't know but, that, and, um, but you probably wouldn't know that unless I don't think anyone would know that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, it was funny. So that was one thing we had to, Anson wanted to sort out the footwear. Um, another thing, we just, um, we actually had a good conversation the night before the game um, with Luke May and Kenny Williams. They play on, they played on our men's basketball team. Okay. Uh, and they spoke to us about how they lost in the final one year, then came back and won it. So we had like a team meeting, just us players and them two on FaceTime. And we like opened up the, the room to questions and whatever and we just kind of filled the room with confidence and filled everyone with confidence and so this was even after the loss no this was before the night before oh, okay so even before the, the game yeah the night before the game so we were confident going into it although right so to kind of preface it obviously the year before you'd lost in the, yeah. the same game so this was okay yeah i've got you I've got yeah you. um so we were confident and although a lot of people weren't confident in us, which yeah. was weird because we're a um, top, top like, team. I don't yeah, know yeah. why anyone would be confident in us. No, I was, I watched a lot of the, the tournament and you know, the two best teams are you guys and Stanford by far. Yeah. So I thought the game was a toss up and it, you know, it was in the end. Yeah. So we were confident. We fought to the end. I mean, it was, it hurt big time because we thought that we deserved it to take them to we took them to penalties we thought we should deserve it especially everyone counting against us but it's just how it is when it comes to penalties it's can go either way yeah it's a matter of you know inches in the game yeah it really um, is. so that let's kind of switch gears a little bit obviously that was super challenging did did that does that give you more kind of fuel it's just you're going into your senior year now it's like you're, you're, I'm sure your goal is I'm winning the tournament. It's got to be, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, <clears throat> me and Lotta were laughing. We were like, mate, we can't lose three times. Nah, now. you can't lose again. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's obviously the goal. Hopefully everything still goes ahead, whether it's yeah. a bit later or what, we don't know yeah. yet. Um, so, obviously, that was super challenging. Let's kind of switch gears now to... Um, kind of your best experiences and I just want to obviously congratulate you personally you just made your your senior national team appearance for first appearance for um for the full national team of England um unbelievable achievement you're still in college um how was that was it was it a daunting experience were you do you feel ready for it and kind of you know how did it feel to sort of play all the way through the ages and and make your debut as a 21 year old yeah no it was the best experience I've ever had. Um, <clears throat> the She Believes tournament especially is a is a, an amazing tournament. You get to play against arguably like three or four of the best teams in the world. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, I wasn't really expecting to play um, because obviously I came in as a training player. I just wanted to prove myself in training. Right. Um, so I, I was l l like, Obviously, going into it, I was nervous. Of course, you're going to be nervous. Um, yeah. My first, like, proper camp with them all. But, no, it was great. It was everything that, like, you expect. Like, as a young youth player, that's all you want to do is end up at the seniors. You play through. Yeah. I, I played – my first game for England when I, was when I was 13. Wow. So, ever since that day, you're just watching the seniors trying to get there. Um, yeah. So, yeah, that was – it was amazing. It's – I was obviously when he called my ne called my name to go in. I didn't. He'd called my name a couple of times the game before, and oh, just really? like to come back in from the warm up. So it wasn't oh. like really like it didn't set in until they actually handed me the cut, like the substitution card. Yeah, um, I know. and I, I was actually like, wow, I'm actually going in. So yeah, no, it was it was the best experience I've ever had. Um, but yeah, it was very nerve wracking. But I bet. How, did they, how were the girls with you coming into the camp? Were they welcoming? Were there any any girls in particular that helped you um, help you settle in and kind of relax the nerves a little bit? Yeah, no, um, a lot of the girls were great. <clears throat> um, the there was actually eight of us that were like young young players um, yeah. at the She Believes, which was also nice and reassuring that yeah. you've got um, 
like I had Anna, Grace, Sandy, all girls that I played in the under 20 World Cup with. So you knew um, people there that you'd played with earlier, which is I'm sure yeah. was helpful as well. Yeah, so that was great. And all the all the girls were great, set, like welcomed us in. Um, awesome. Yeah, it, they set set a great environment for us coming in. And then just briefly talk about actually crossing the white line. Did you get a touch on the ball? Were you, how was the your touch on the ball? Was it, were you kind of looking around thinking, you know, wow, I'm actually wearing the full shirt, you know, brilliant. I can't even imagine the feeling. Yeah, no, it was, it was great. I think my first... And were your parents there? My dad was there. Oh, he yeah. must have been so proud. I can't even imagine that either. Yeah, no, my dad was there. So I think my first pass was just a pass forward. Um, yeah. I had a couple one-on-ones, but I was just, yeah, it was hard. Like, you're soaking up the moment, but then you've got to be in the zone, especially coming in as a sub. You've yeah. got to adjust to the speed and the game. And, and you're playing against Spain as well, who are a really, really good side. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, no, it was great. Brilliant. So um let's briefly touch on obviously we talked about any future obviously the near future is what are your kind of personal goals for this this coming year when you do manage to get back obviously the goal's got to be championship i'm sure that's going to be the goal for every girl in the squad and the, and the coaching staff as well do you have any personal goals that you want to achieve before you know your college career is over yeah i mean well obviously we'd love to our goal is going to be to win the national championship For and sure. yeah. to retain our ACC um, championship and the ACC league. Um, no, I mean, they're the three biggest goals and whatever I can do to help the team get to that will be my personal goals. But yeah. yeah. Those and then what about, um, have you thought about post-college yet? Do you, do you have any kind of idea or preference to where you would want to play? Or is there any dreams that you have of a club you want to play for? What do you think will happen after you, um, you know, God willing, you stay healthy and there's no more injuries and everything goes well next year? Um, what do you think will come right after that? Not too sure yet. Um, I mean, definitely want to continue my journey with England. Um, for sure. So whatever team can put me in the best environment to do in that um, would be great but yeah I'm open to either um I love America and I love the lifestyle and I love the people so and I love England too so I'll just whatever team fits I'm not sure yet I'm take as it comes yeah it's the best thing you can do really I think and you know you're obviously you're still so young you're 21 years Mm -hmm. old and you've got your whole career in front of you and when you finish college think of the experiences you've already had even you know injuries losses you've been through um I'm sure after college you'll go from strength to strength. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, but, hopefully. Yeah. Okay, let's um I'm gonna open up the floor. So what we'll do is if you can like swipe up through the screen, see if you can find any decent questions that you think will kinda of help the audience. Um and I've got a few written down here. So while you're looking, I'll just um Okay. I'll I'll ask one from this list that someone asked on my story. Um do you think that goal scoring is like a natural trait or is it something that you learned? Like, were you always just a natural goal scorer or is it something that you learned? Um, I think I've always had a powerful shot. Um, yeah. That's one thing that I'd like. Would always, but to be a goal scorer is definitely learn. Um, to the different, especially in the nine, um, learning to score in the box, in the air, outside the box. Something that I w- was working on a lot last season was heading and finishing in- inside the six-yard box, like one-touch finishing. Um, yeah. No, definitely, Learn. I don't think you're born a goal scorer. Definitely you know. so- something you've trained and worked on. Yeah. All right, let me find another one. If you have any on there that, that are decent, then feel free to, okay. to knock them in. Um as a striker, what's your mentality and prep before games? Um, do you visualise? Do you? Um, how do you get in the zone? How do you prepare? Yeah, um, I visualise a little bit. Um, I like to walk on the pitch before the game, just with my headphones in. I don't really like get super like hyped up before a game. Just kind of like I listen to my own music. Like yeah. pretty mellow nothing crazy 
Um, yeah, that's what I'm like. Although our team is known for having a crazy dance party before training, I don't uh, before our game. Oh, really? How they do it. <laughs> Some girls get. I don't, there's actually some videos on UNC Women's Soccer. If anyone wants to look at them, there. Some of the girls are crazy. We have a disco ball in our locker room. Oh my word! Yeah. <laughs> That's <fine. clears throat> there's some good questions here. If you look right down at the bottom, people are asking now. There's about five or six questions. Okay. But pretty decent ones. Um, how did you get noticed by England, and what are any tips getting to play for England? Um. When I was younger, um, there was talent scouts that would go out to training um, and games. So, I, I mean, I don't know how it works for the young girls now, but just you just got to perform at your club and play every game like there's an England scout there. And don't wait for the games where you see them turn up and then start playing well. You've got to be consistent and yeah, every play, like, game. play like they're there every game. And that, that's when you're... And then if you train like that too, that's you're going to get better and that's how they're going to notice you anyway. If someone gave me that advice when I was really young. I met, I met a pro player when I was really young and I was like, how do you do it? How do you get there? And he said, doesn't matter if you're playing in the, the dog and duck or you're playing at Wembley. He's like, play like there's, there's somebody watching you all the time. Yeah. Even if you feel like there's going to be no one there, always play um, like there could be. So that's really good advice for sure. Yeah. Um, I was going to just quickly ask you as well a question for me. How was it to kind of um, deal with, because I know I've been a college athlete, how was it to deal with the education and the soccer and balancing the two? Because I know at certain times in my college career, it was so hard to do well in school and um, do well uh, on the soccer pitch as well. Uh, how was that for you to adapt to? Yeah, no, <clears throat> it is. It, there's no beating around the bush. It's hard, yeah, especially... It's hard. Um, we try and graduate in December, so a semester okay. early. So you have to take five classes even when you're in season, which is rough. And oh. um, you just have to find time. Like, you have to do it on the bus, on, like, your long bus trips. You have to... And are the professors good with you about being on the team? Yeah, they're really great. That's one thing that makes it Especially a lot easier. at UNC, you know. <laughs> if you're on the yeah. soccer team at UNC, then surely you get a little bit of uh, leniency from them. Yeah, and if the professor's not good, then a lot of the time we're advised to drop the class and just find another one. Okay. Because it yeah, yeah, plays yeah. such a big role. If your professor's not on board with you, then it's going to make the process even harder. Yeah, definitely. Okay, some good questions here. <laughs> Favourite memory playing football? Oh, good question. In a few um, I mean, it, recent memory was obviously making my debut, but... yeah. For, like pastime memory probably my first ever game for England <clears throat> um was we played Ireland in a double header um and it was just a new experience it was like yeah the start of a journey and it was it was great I look back at it now it was like our kits were like we were in boys kits then and they were like <clears throat> shorts were down to our knees and we were playing <laughs> in like umbro kit but no it was great it was absolutely not like that new one to, not like that yeah. new, uh, the new that new kit that you wore in that first game you played for. That kit is nice, the dark red. Yeah, the red one. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, like a yeah, blood red. Nice. Um, you can pick these if you want. Otherwise, I'll pick them. There's a good, there's a good one there. What about um, any players that you look up to? Um, yeah, that could be from well, like as, as a youth player. Or... Yeah, growing up in the female game it was Kelly Smith um yeah she was <clears throat> probably one of the best forwards England's ever had you're actually quite similar to her even though she's left footed you're quite a similar kind of <clears throat> you know she was a big forward as well yeah no she's I mean she's a legend she does yeah, she she's a true goal scorer um yes yeah. she was great to learn off but um today's game I love I'm a big Ronaldo fan. Um, just because... Ronaldo over Messi. <laughs> I don't know. I like there. Ronaldo because of like his work ethic, but Messi is yeah. just a, a Magic. different. Like he's just like a like a god. He's different. Yeah. Now. What I what I heard is that you know Ronaldo's <laughs> the best kind of like the best player in the world on this planet, but Messi's like from another planet. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Um. 
but yeah, I like Raheem Sterling too. I think yeah, he's I like got Sterling Harry well. Kane's goal scorer. Kane, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a few others here. People are asking, how do you separate yourself from other great players? Mm. That's a hard question. Yeah, that is a hard question. What makes you um, different, I guess? I think just, I don't know, I have like a, a mentality to like <clears throat> go out and I, I love to score and create goals. So. so that's a great word there, mentality. Something I spoke about with Jack yesterday, um, which I think is really important. Just touch on that a little bit about, especially as a forward, you know, you, you're always going to miss chances. You're not going to score everything you get. How important is it to be, I call it like a short-term memory, where if you miss a chance, you've got to forget instantly and be ready for the next one because there'll always be another one. Um, yeah. Is there anything yeah, you do personally to, to kind of, make sure that you're mentally in check during games. How do you deal with making a mistake? One thing that I actually learned at UNC is when I, like, if I make a mistake, the next the next thing I do, whether it's, like, anything, the next thing I'm going to do when I get the ball is just complete my next pass. Yeah, so, like, that's a great, if I that's miss, a great like, tip, yeah. Yeah, if I miss a sitter, like, it's embarrassing as a forward, but... <laughs> the next time I get the ball, like just complete your next pass and then move on. And once I've completed the next pass, just to settle yourself like... back down. Yeah. Yeah, I've not. That's really good, actually. Yeah, that's a really good, um, a really good analogy of that. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah. I'm sure, people will take a lot from that. Got to we'll answer a couple more, and then we're there. Um, I think there's some UNC guys. Who's your favourite UNC athlete? Will Blumberg. <laughs> not Will Blumberg no I'm just kidding uh, ever probably Michael Jordan how could you not say oh, right. Michael Jordan um, let's see if I can find one more who's the okay. best player you've been up against Ooh, good question you can throw a couple of names out there if there's been a few um, when I played in um the under 20 world cup against france i played against a left back i think her name's backer um she plays for leon she was quality really um, really really good young player um, what was her um strengths why did she stand out to you she is a fullback but she is kind of like lucy bronze she'll get up create like so you're a winger but you have to like track all the way back and she's like yeah bronze is amazing she can attack defend yeah that's Cross what she's dudes. like. She'll go forward and 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 attack. Um, Naomi Germa for Stanford's also a quality centre back. Yeah, my buddy um, trains her in uh in the Bay Area. She's yeah, she's a really good player. She played well against us in the um final. Good defender. And I mean Macy and Lotta too. <laughs> that yeah. to my UNC team. Great players. Yeah, yeah. Lotta's yeah, Lotta's a, a brilliant defender. I mean, yeah, so good. Yeah, okay, let me find. I've got one more question, then we're there. Then we're there. Um, what's the best advice you've ever been given? Hmm. And do you have any advice for for players that are trying to get to where you're at? Because I know girls that you know that you're in a roster of 24 what, or 30 girls or whatever. Out, of, you know, the whole country of girls wants to play in that team. Yeah. Um, the advice that I use, like before games and stuff is with my dad and my brothers just be the best like whatever you do whether it's in your passing in your work in your finishing whatever just be the best like that you can be and that you know you are um that's always that. something that i look at before in a game that's um true. yeah advice for young players i guess like be adaptable like in your environment like change like I don't know, be able to play it like at a young age, be able to play a lot of positions, be able to like go on your left and right foot. Um, Definitely, so that's huge. When, that's I was, huge. when I was younger, I didn't focus on my left foot as much as I do now. It's probably because when you were younger, you could just dominate doing, which I, I always tell kids now, there's, there's kids that, you know, at U11, U12 that are just dominating doing the same thing of, you know, it might be running in behind because they're faster, might be controlling in the air because they're taller, but... You have to be so versatile to, to reach a high level. Um, yeah, for sure. That's exactly right. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Les, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for your time. Um, 
hopefully one day I'll get to get to come watch you play and meet you in person. Yeah, for out on the West Coast. For sure. Yeah. Um, all the best for kind of <clears throat> getting through this tough time and um, hopefully you girls can get back out there and get back to work as soon as possible. Yeah, thanks. You too. All right. Thanks, Alessia. Take care. Yeah, no problem. See you later. See ya.